Congratulations. How are you feeling after a performance like that? Uh, first and foremost, to set the tone for this interview, I want to start it off with a, a quote that just encompasses everything that me and my team went through in this camp and cutting down from 230 to 185. And it's from uh, one of the greatest rappers around, J. Cole. And his quote goes, if you believe in God, one thing's true. If you don't aim too high, then you've aimed too low. So, I mean, we aimed high this camp and we took, we took a chance, you know, um, cutting down to 185. And I would love to say that I could have done this all by myself and I'm the king of the world and nothing could stop me, but really it took a village and a lot of people around me that sacrificed so much to make sure that I could be the man that I'm sitting here today as a winner. And um, it takes a lot and I, I really just want to thank my village, I want to thank God, and I want to thank everybody around me who sacrificed so much. Was all of that worth it? Oh man, yes. Um, it's, uh, I, I love to win, but more than that, I hate to lose. And uh, some people are comfortable with losing. And for me, that's just, it's, it's seeds in me. So I'll do anything I can to win and uh, take that step. And so yes, it is worth it, but there's a lot of work to do. So how did you feel in there after that cut? Did you feel the same? Did you feel better, worse? What was it like in there? Uh, you guys tell me. I, I think I looked pretty good, and I, I think I was a little fast in there as well. Um, I, I, I honestly, all joking aside, I felt great. Um, like I said, we prepared well, and uh, as, as one of my coaches, Lauren Landau, says, you don't, you don't uh, rise to the occasion. You fall to the level of your preparation. We prepared well. You going to stay at that weight? Um, for the foreseeable future, yeah. I mean, I, I think there's a lot of interesting fights at 185. Um, they're like, how, how many people get an opportunity to share a cage with a three-time national champion wrestler who's done so, so much for the sport of wrestling? And there's a slew of guys that have done great things in countless different sports in 185. And so uh, while the 205 weight class is a little tied up, I, I definitely see myself uh, being a 185er for a little bit. What did you think in there? Did your opponent give you the fight that you expected or, or did you have to make adjustments? I mean, you always have to make adjustments in the fight. Uh, you're going against uh, a man that has dreams and aspirations just like you do. So you got to make a lot of adjustments on the fly. But for the f most part, uh, Coach Jay, Coach Peter, Brandon, they, they put together a good game plan. I stuck to it, trusted the process and got it done. You talked about off the top about, you know, it's an army that got you here to, to this fight. And we saw Muhammad Usman, uh, you know, in the crowd. We saw Archie Conlon. Just how much was that on your mind, sort of repping the team tonight and uh, putting on a good performance? Hey, you got to always rep for your dogs. And so I wasn't going to be the dog that wasn't going to rep hard. So that's that. Those guys are a constant inspiration to me on a daily basis. And uh, we push each other. And, you know, like I'm the takedown king in the room. So. They just, I just had to put them on notice there with taking down a three-time national champion. Archie hasn't done that. Mo definitely hasn't done that. So I, and you know, I take both of them down at will. So I just want to put that on notice why I got the mic here. <laughs> you mentioned your opponent, a uh, really tough guy. You went out there, put on a great performance. Middleweight's one of those divisions that is sort of going through a bit of a transition period right now uh, in terms of contenders. After tonight's win, how close do you feel like you are to a title shot at 185? I feel like I'm right there. Yeah. I, I, I'm a contender. Um, I've done what I needed to do to prove myself at a heavier weight class, uh, 205. I fought a bunch of killers up there. You saw what I did to them. I'm coming down here at 85 and everybody's on notice, you know? And so that's, that's not to say all these guys aren't good, but I, I definitely put myself and cemented myself as the contender for a title. How do you match up against Johnny Eblen right now if you were to fight him next? That's a long camp, and I'm excited. He just fought. I just fought. We put together a, a phenomenal fight. I mean, Johnny Eblen, uh, I think I said it in my press conference, he's the best wrestler to never win a national championship. So I have mad respect for that dude. Um, he's a phenomenal competitor, uh, a consummate professional, and a great teammate to uh, the people that are around him. And so, like, man, I, I love this sport, and I, I love the martial arts, and to be able to compete and show my skills against someone like that, that would be an absolute amazing thing. 
There's a lot of uncertainty going on with the promotion going forward. How do you sort of deal with that? I know you're in the gym all the time preparing, but like, you know, now I'm sure you can think more about that because the fight's over. Um, yeah, so there, there's uncertainty when you drove in the work today. There's uncertainty when I walk across the street. There's uncertainty in, in everybody's everyday lives. And so if you dwell on that, then that'll just consume you. Uh, then the, I just take it one day at a time, one step at a time, one hour at a time, and just keep my head down. Regardless of what happens in the promotion or with the promotion, that's way above my pay grade, way above my head. But I'm constantly going to strive to be the best in the world and, and dare to be the best. What isn't uncertain is you getting to celebrate tonight. What are your plans right now? Nice color on that blazer, by the way. Oh, thank you. Hey, we're matching. That's you know? what I'm saying. Yeah. Shout out to his clothiers. But um, tonight, um, tonight I'm going to celebrate with my wife and my friends. Um, and then uh, tomorrow I'm going to head up and celebrate uh, a win with my other best friend. He's got a, he's got a big game tomorrow, so I, I can't wait to go and watch him play. The truth. Grant Neal, what's up, man? Dylan Rush, MMA. Let's go. You're a man on a mission tonight. It seemed like you were ahead after those first two rounds. What were some of the things your coaches, Brandon Gertz, Peter Straub, Jake Ramos, were telling you heading to that third and final round? Well, I know all of you guys heard what Gertz said, so I'm going to do him first because it's the fastest. Juice! <laughs> so, yeah, you hear Gertz of the quarter. That's, that's what he's bringing and uh, bringing the pressure, you know, keeping the energy up. And, um, with what Peter was saying, uh, there's a lot of moments that you can win in the fight that a lot of people don't see. Um, and so Peter was just constantly telling me to win those moments and win that empty space, um, especially in the transitions from the wrestling to the striking. And Coach Jake put together one of the most phenomenal game plans I've seen in, in, in striking. I, I, like, I would love to say that I made that up myself, but that was, that was all uh, Jake's breakdown and preparation for this. And um, he, he spends countless hours, and um, a lot of times it's thankless. But, I mean, he's best striking coach in the game, in my opinion. And he put together a game plan to um, break down an opponent, and I just stuck to it. As James just mentioned, we saw Mo Usman in the crowd, Archie Kogan. We also saw a whole section chanting your name, chanting the truth. Bruno's out there. Yep. What does it mean to have these guys care so much about you to travel out to support you every step of the way? Hey, that means the world to me. Like it, I, I know I don't have three million followers on Instagram that are paid for or whatever that these guys are doing for their followers. But I'll tell you this: my fan base is one of the most supportive fan base, if not the most supportive fan base in all of MMA. Um, I have the absolute best fans and they come out in droves i think if if i leave this arena i mean they're gonna ha have an empty section and, and so i mean bellator they keep on putting me on the prelims and then they find out that dang a section is gone so i, I don't understand that because uh if i'm trying to make some money i'm having grant neal on every main card probably the main event because he's putting people in the stands they're staying there they're buying tickets they're posting about Bellator, and, and my fan base is unbelievable, so it's awesome to have him there. Thanks for the question. Last one on that note. How blessed do you feel to lead the life you live, Grant Neal? Man, I am unbelievably blessed. Um, like I said at the top, man, with, without, without God, without my faith, I'd be nothing. And um, I just want to use this platform and what I'm doing and and what what I do every single day to just inspire one person you know like uh, I don't want to leave this earth without uh, scoring a victory for humanity and uh, like that's that's like my ultimate goal on this planet and uh, the MMA world and what I'm doing here is giving me that opportunity to do so and I'm not going to squander that and I, I, I really 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 feel amazingly blessed with the opportunity to carry that torch yeah. What's going on, Grant? How's it going, my brother? I'm good. I'm good. MMA Locker Room here, part of Pub Sports Radio. Last time we spoke, I asked you, you know, what you're going to be doing after that uh, winning celebration. Where are you going to be eating at? Did you get that Roscoe's? Oh, bro, we couldn't even get to Roscoe's. We had to leave early, and it was just a whole a whole thing. And I, I was actually sad, but I did, I did end up getting some chicken and waffles, but it wasn't Roscoe's. All right, we just got to settle for that. I mean, you look good in this division. It's been a long time since we've seen an active fighter going up and down in weight classes. Would you be ready to take that step if Bellator asked you to? Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, 
Like, not, <laughs> there's not many people raising their hand to fight between light heavyweight and middleweight, and that's why you don't see many people doing it. It's, it, it takes a lot of discipline, a lot of hard work, and uh, a full team behind you. And so, yeah, man, first and foremost, I'm a fighter, and I love what I do, and I don't take that for granted at all. Like, fighting is what I love to do. So if that means that I got to cut a little bit of weight or if that means that I got to fight at a heavier weight, whatever it takes to get those fights, I'm going to do it. All right. Now, I'm going to just ask you something. So you said you're the takedown king, right? Oh, yeah. All right, man. The Denver Broncos need some help out there. Sean Payton got 70 points put up on him. You said you're anxious to see the game tomorrow. Any way you could go out there and help the Denver Broncos? Uh, well, I'm not going to the Broncos game, but do I, I do have a lot of friends and, and people that are competitors out there. Um, and, you know, like I football is my first love. So I always think that... Um, it, there, there, there's something in my heart that always tells me that I could definitely have an impact on any team that I would play for, for sure. Um, but, you know, I think the Denver Broncos are going through just like uh, any organization, just like an infancy phase, and they have a lot of injuries. So uh, hopefully they take care of that. And I'm not going to speculate about what their program is, but I'm going up to see my boy Christian McCaffrey tomorrow in San Francisco, and I'm going to watch him do his thing. And like he watched me do my thing tonight. Grant over here. What's up? How's it going, man? <laughs> it's going good. Thanks for the happy birthday. Now I can actually acknowledge that. Like, I, I wasn't able to celebrate my birthday at all. I didn't even know I, I turned 28. I was just like, why are people saying happy birthday to me, coach? He's all like, don't worry about it. It's not, we'll worry about that after the fight. <laughs> well, hey, congratulations on your birthday victory, man. I, you looked very comfortable out there at 185. Now stepping in the cage at 185, would you say that you were more comfortable at 185 pounds as opposed to 205, or are you pretty comfortable no matter what? I'm a fighter. So, like, if it's 185, so be it. If it's 205, so be it. Um, I'm just daring. I have a really big dream, and I'm daring to do it. So. How close did you feel the fight was going into the third round? Because I noticed in the third round, you turned up the pace. You, you, had, you even had him hurt a couple times. Uh, you, were, you were trying to finish the fight. I, I noticed that you took action in the third. Yeah, I, I don't like... Like, I don't like to leave it to the judges, you know, so I mean no one likes to leave it to the judges kudos to him He took a lot of tough shots, but man, I stuck to the game plan and we started breaking him down methodically and uh, I felt Like I was up the entire fight But just because you're up the entire fight doesn't mean that you don't go out there and work for the finish And so that's what our my coaches came to the corner and said they said Don't sit here and just let him be Go for the finish. If you want to finish this guy, finish him. And so I was like, shit. All right, they gave me the green light, so let's go. Thanks, Grant. Go enjoy San Diego, man. I will.